what's up everyone? So it's been a while since. Hey, another talking video. When is your next travel video? Okay, let me give you guys an update. So basically for the past two months, my travel plans have been pretty dry because I had to catch up on a lot of work, both on the YouTube edits and the client work. And I only had like one short trip in July and I was planning a couple of local shoots. So that's why I couldn't really fit in any substantial travel plan. But not to worry because starting from next week, a lot of the travel plans are going to be kicking in place and I'm super pumped up. Yeah, just all the way to the year end, there's a lot planned out already. So stick to that. And in fact, at the time that you're watching this video, I'll be away on a mystery trip, which I have no idea where I'm heading to, like as of right now. So I'm pretty nervous about that. Um, so if you want to have like real time updates on where I'm going to be up to, you have to follow my Instagram page. And yeah, let's head on to the main point of the video. Alright, so it's been about two years since I did my last like what's in my camera bag video or what gear that I use for my travel videos and I'm back at it again. Um, well, the gear hasn't fundamentally changed. It's just that I upgraded like my camera and then you know changed from Canon lenses to Sony lenses. Alright, so the very first gear is is the A7 III. Yes, I'm using the A7 III for my main camera right now. Um, previously, I was using the A7S II for about the past two years. It's been awesome, this camera, but um, the A7 III is pretty much better than the A7S II in almost every regard. And right off the bat is the battery life of the A7 III is amazing, amazing. Back when I was using the A7S, I was missing so many moments because the battery ran flat and I had to use like five original batteries, which is insane. And for the A7 III, the battery is a tank. It could last, like one original battery could last an entire day of shoot. It's pretty amazing and I never have to miss any moments anymore. And of course, the amazing autofocus that I can get with the A7 III, it's perfect for vlogging. Look at the autofocus, it's, it's 100% reliable and I really don't have to worry about autofocus anymore. It really helps me in vlogging. And I would say the A7 III is kind of like the perfect hybrid full frame camera where it does really well in photography and also in the video side. Um, the 4K footage is amazing. HD footage is amazing, it's great. And of course the colors are improved. The only thing is of course the low light can't be compared to the A7S II because the A7S II is still the king of low light. But the low light is still pretty good on the A7 III and it's something that I can live with with all the other benefits so it's good all right so next up I'm going to talk about my lenses that I use on my travel trips essentially they are mostly the same just that I'm now using Sony lenses and I'm really really far away because I'm showing you guys like the Sony uh, 16 to 35 G master f 2.8 and this is like my to go to lens I use it about 70% of the time the 16 to 35 because it's yeah from the wide end on 16 mm it's just great for landscapes and for me to vlog. Um, really love the wide end and also you can have the versatility of going on the close-up end which is the 35mm side. You can get really good close-up shots and even portraits with the 35mm and the quality of bokeh for this is really really beautiful and I love bokeh a lot so that's why I decided to spend like about 2.8k Singapore dollars second hand for this lens. It's, uh, it's Really, really expensive, but yeah, investment, investment. All right, I'm back again with the wide angle. This looks so much better. And so coming up next, the second lens is, is the Sony Zeiss 50mm f1.4. This lens is like my aesthetic lens. This is the f1.4 version. So it's going to give me really good, good bokeh, like beautiful and creamy bokeh. I use this a lot for like portraits or street shots where you know I'm in close working distance with my subjects. Yep, I really really do love the 50mm look. It's good. I love this lens a lot. Okay, moving on to the very last lens that I bring to my trips is is the Sony 7200 f4 version. Basically, a 7200 is a telephoto lens and this allows me to take shots from really, really far away. This is like my sniper and stalker lens to take people, strangers, locals from a far distance or even like wildlife and um, they would never ever like notice you if you are discreet enough. This lens is great 
to do that. So having a telephoto lens when I travel is super essential as well to get a different kind of shot. And also you get to have a compressed background where the background is a lot more larger. And this gives me another variation for my shots. And um, yeah, I like to use this lens, but I don't use a telephoto lens very often. I would say maybe about like 15% of the time I would use a telephoto lens, but still it's very good to shoot. Um, details and close-ups of shots when I travel. Okay, so next up is my favorite new toy. It's the DJI Mavic Air. Look at the size of it. Like, my hands are really small and it's about the size of my hand. And for its size, the image quality coming out of this drone is just mm, sweet. And uh, it's been a really great addition to my kit because it really adds a new perspective to my videos. This drone really changed it all because of its size and quality. I would say the only caveat of this drone, the Mavic Air, is that the Wi-Fi transmission can be a little bit trippy, especially when you're near buildings or with things that have a lot of interference. Um, if you're near like airplanes, which you shouldn't be, it's very laggy. The transmission can even cut off at some time. So the most optimal location that you should be flying a drone is of course an open field. That is where the Mavic Air really is smooth and all. But all in all, I really enjoyed using this drone. It's been such a joy to fly this. It's pretty easy to set up and fly and get great shots out of it. And for travel, it's just kind of like a no-brainer to have a drone to showcase the entire landscape and scenery. And um, yeah, really love this new toy. Mwah. All right, so next up I have with me is the GoPro Hero 6. Definitely for me, an action cam is essential for my travel videos. It again adds another layer of perspective to my videos. It's particularly useful for situations that you know, I can't bring my DSLR or mirrorless to as like for example a water slide. The only way to shoot it is with an action cam because it's also waterproof. And so yeah, very very handy for situations like that. And not just for water slides or water activities, but um, again, I usually use it with like a selfie perspective and this helps to give like the audience a sense of my surroundings. It really provides a very wide view. The GoPro is already waterproof, so you don't have to add an additional casing and you can actually record audio with this, which is really great. I mean, it's so small. And in terms of image quality, it can shoot 4K video up to 60 frames per second. So it's pretty insane. Like for such a small little thing here. And I would say the only downside is, again, with all action cameras, you don't want to shoot it in low light because it's still pretty crappy in low light. But yeah, really sweet little package over here. Okay, so next up, I have with me an ND filter. And if you don't know what an ND filter does, basically it cuts out light and allow less light to enter your cameras, especially in broad daylight because you want to keep your shutter speed low and all that kind of stuff. So an ND filter is like a sunglass over your lens. Okay, so the next important equipment that I use all the time for all of my travel videos, vlogs, whatever is the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus, which I'm using on right now to record this. And um, yeah, the quality you can hear for itself, it's it's good. What's great about the latest version over like the older models is um, it can actually power on together with your camera. Like that, that itself is like the best feature of the latest one. You basically won't have to worry about not switching on your mic. It's just one thing off your mind when you're busy shooting. And also the battery inside the Video Mic Pro Plus is rechargeable and it's super, super convenient. You don't have to buy 9 volt batteries all the time again. Yeah, Pro Plus. Good. Next up, I have this very handy memory card case to keep all of my memory cards and keep them organized. I'm not, I'm not a very organized person, but this is really, really, really handy. You can put a micro SD, you can put your normal SD cards, and then it's, I think it's waterproof as well to just keep your memory card safe and dry. So, all right, last of all, I have with me the Glide Cam, who in 2018 is still bringing their Glide Cam in their travels. Anyone out there, I think everyone else is using a motorized gimbal already and I'm the only idiot who is bringing a glad cam. Anyways, this has been my travel companion, my buddy for all of my travels for the past couple of years. It has endured with me snow, rain, sunshine, sea, whatever. And uh, it's still 
standing strong. Yeah, this is the equipment that provides me with very smooth looking shots. It feels like you're floating and flying through the landscapes. This is basically a stabilizer to help stabilize all of your moving shots. I have a love-hate relationship with the Glidecam because it is a pain and a bitch to carry around but um, yeah, it's still my favorite travel buddy even though I have a love-hate relationship with it. And we are finally done um, with all of my equipment that I bring overseas. So yeah, I hope you guys have found this insightful on how I manage my gear and what I bring to get the shot that I need to get. Yeah, if you did, you know the drill. Give me a thumbs up or leave me in the comments on what you want to know more about. And that is all. Don't forget to subscribe and join in the ride for more videos like this. And I will see you guys in the next video.